Pokemon recently celebrated its 25th anniversary, and it is certainly the greatest media franchise in the world at the moment. But there's something that I think the series is missing. Pokemon has seen main series titles on the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, GBA, DS, 3DS, and Switch now, alongside some spin-offs on those same platforms as well as some other ones. Every fan has their own favorite game, like mine is Legends Arceus, or if you only include main series titles, it would be Sun and Moon. And countless people have experienced Pokemon in some way, perhaps through the games, the anime, the movies, or even the TCG. Unfortunately, we've seen Pokemon do us dirty on different occasions recently, mainly with the Diamond and Pearl remakes and Sword and Shield. So we can't always expect what we want or anything too great all the time. But that's why I believe this idea I'm about to tell you will never happen. Unless someone not affiliated with the Pokemon Company makes it. But that of course would not be official, so... It would not be as special as it would be if Game Freak actually made it. This idea would not bring anything new to the franchise. Instead, it would turn the history of the series into something great. This idea I have would be released as two separate games, each similar to each other, and would most likely appear on the Nintendo Switch, as that is our current console, and the sooner these games exist, the better. Anyway, these games would be known as the Pokemon Red Collection and the Pokemon Blue Collection, and they would both be definitive compilation games for the Pokemon series. These games would accumulate every main series game, not including remakes or sequels, into two separate collections, but perhaps there could be a third featuring the sequels and spin-offs and all that. However, I'm simply only discussing the two I have in mind, which would focus on the main series games. The reason that there would be two separate collections is because I noticed a theme in every set of main series games from over the years. Every time, one game is only reminiscent of Red and the other of Blue. Obviously, it started with Red and Blue, which is where the names of the collections come from, but then you have Gold and Silver, where Gold is similar to Red and Silver is similar to Blue. Then there is Ruby and Sapphire, which are obviously Red and Blue. Then there is Diamond and Pearl, where Diamond is bluish and Pearl is a warmer color, like Red. Then Black and White, and while these don't actually resemble Red and Blue, the Legendaries do, as Reshiram from Black glows Red, and Zekrom from white glows blue. Then there is X and Y, which were also just red and blue as far as the legendaries and the logos go. And then there is Sun and Moon, which were both one color down the rainbow from red and blue. So they fit in with red and blue as well. And then we had Sword and Shield, which, like Ruby and Sapphire and X and Y, were colored red and blue. And this November, we're going to get Scarlet and Violet, and Scarlet is literally red, and Violet is close enough to blue. However, assuming these collections come out soon, Scarlet and Violet would not be there as they are very new. So with that said, the games would be split as follows. Pokemon Red Collection includes Pokemon Red, Gold, Ruby, Pearl, Black, Y, Sun, and Shield, while Pokemon Blue Collection includes Pokemon Blue, Silver, Sapphire, Diamond, White, X, Moon, and Sword. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe these games could be made real by Game Freak, but even if they did make them, they'd probably sell them for even more than normal Switch game costs, so we're talking well over $60 to play pre-existing games that are simply copy and pasted onto one cartridge. The perfect release for these games would be for normal Switch game price, but in the end, we'll probably never get these anyway, which is why I'm talking about them. I do want to add that people are selling cartridges containing hundreds of DS games online for only like $20 or so, so that would be the irony of Game Freak either not doing this or just selling it for more than $60. Anyway, I think these games would be awesome to have in real life because even if you already own the games within them, the physical copies would make nice collector's pieces, and it would be fun to experience stuff as old as the original generation on Nintendo Switch. Perhaps there could even be a special double pack, including both games in one large collector's box that allows you to display the cases, and it would also come with some special commemorative items, like figures of the box art Pokemon from each collection. From there, 
they could release individual special editions where you can buy just one of the games in a collector's display box, and it would include a figure of just the box art Pokemon included in the games of the collection you chose to buy. So the special collection for Red would have a figure featuring Charizard, Ho-Oh, Groudon, Palkia, Reshiram, Yabeltal, Solgaleo, and Zamazenta, while Blue would have a figure of Blastoise, Lugia, Kyogre, Dialga, Zekrom, Xerneas, Lunala, and Zacian. And this would add no more than an additional 10 or 20 bucks to the individual games. Or at least it should. Which would preferably cost the usual $60 for a Switch game in the first place. These games would allow for Pokemon fans new and old to play their favorite games all over again on a new system, or try games they've never tried before, as $60 for all of them would be a lot better than scraping the abyss of eBay to find a used copy of every single game. I would personally love this, as I've never tried a single Gen 1 game before, and I've never tried the OG Gen 2 games either, though I have tried the remakes, and I've also never tried an OG Gen 3 game, though I did try the remakes for those too. The collections would go a little further than just being compilation games. Perhaps they would include each game's OST, similar to what Mario 3D All-Stars did, and would be formatted similar to that game. You'd scroll through the eight games included in each, and then there would be eight OSTs at the end. I can't remember which game did it, but I know there's some compilation game out there that shows you the history of the franchise that it's from as you scroll through the games. So these Pokemon collections would do the same. As you scroll through, it is set up like a timeline and describes Pokemon's history and describes each game as you scroll through them. These games would really be good for a wide range of people. As I said, they could reach people who want to try main series games they've never tried before. They would be good for game collectors, especially of the special collector's versions I described. And they would simply be great for any Pokemon fan to own as a definitive Pokemon game. As I said, there could even be another collection game. And I know I said I wouldn't talk about it, but I think I actually will. Perhaps this would be called the Pokemon Special Collection. There would be two of these actually, as there would be too many extra games to fit into one. One would include Pokemon Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, Platinum, Fire Red, Heart Gold, White 2, Omega Ruby, and Ultra Sun, and the other would have also Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, and Platinum, but it would have Leaf Green, Soul Silver, Black 2, Alpha Sapphire, and Ultra Moon instead. Maybe they would have BDSP as well, but I don't think anyone would even want that. Now these special collections would get confusing, which is why I didn't want to talk about them, because technically you could add black and white too into the red and blue collections I was talking about earlier, and you could add Auras and the Ultra games in of them as well to make them extra deluxe, but not if they're only dealing with mainline games, and not sequels or remakes. But at the end of the day, it's not up to me to decide these things, it's up to Game Freak or Nintendo or the Pokemon Company, whatever you call it, and they'll probably never do it anyway, so it looks like we're out of luck with this idea, as interesting as it would be. You know, instead of talking about something that Game Freak is never going to make, maybe I should talk about something that they will make. So. I'd like to introduce to you, coming to Nintendo Switch in 2023, 